It is Carl Brown from Guitar Lessons 365.com. Today we got a great one. We're going to learn how to play Hammer to Fall by Queen. We're going to do the, lo uh, the single version of this. So it's going to have a little bit shorter guitar solo. Um, and uh, oh, about 30 seconds shorter, I guess. Anyway, this is a kind of, they played the single version at Live Aid. So it's probably the one that more people know the song from. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. All right, uh, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that little notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. And check out my Guitar Academy at guitarlessons365.com. We have the GL365 Academy there. Um, got a great bunch of people over there already, great community, and we're having lots of fun, so I hope you'll join us. And I have merchandise. So you can get designs like this that were designed uh, by me and my brother, actually. Um, in our merchandise store, boom, you get the link in the description, and you can get this for yourself on anything, stickers, hoodies, uh, I don't even know, coffee mugs, tons of stuff. Anyway, so let's get into the song. We are in standard tuning, but uh, especially on the remastered version of this, it's a little flat, the tuning on the original recording, so I had to work some a uh, little bit of voodoo to get the pitch raised up so, um, so I can transcribe it, so it might not match up exactly. Uh, when you're trying to play along with that, so just keep that in mind. But I am in standard tuning here, so we're going to start with this main riff. All right, so that starts with an A major chord just barred across the second fret. So bar across the D, G, and uh, the B strings with the open A. So you do a quick down, up, down on that chord. And just let that ring, and then we're going to um, make it a D major chord by just placing down the third fret there on the, uh, you just leave the bar as it is, and, but add the third fret now on the B string and then the fourth fret on the D. You still have the A string in the bass. Do that again. So as soon as I hit the D chord, I, I kind of kill it. So we do that all together three times. So after the third time, take this shape that you have and move it up to uh, two frets. So it's an E triad, but we still have the A in the bass. And then we resolve that to... This A major chord. Now this is kind of how Brian May is playing the A major chord, but it doesn't mean that you have to. If you don't like using your thumb on the low E string of the fifth fret there, uh, with the rest of the chord just kind of play like a normal bar chord, don't do it. So just uh, use it as a, do it as a full bar. It doesn't matter at all. So like this into a uh, you know a standard A major bar chord there, or you can do it like him and just thumb it on the uh, low E string. Now when he goes into this chord, when he resolves each time at the end of the, this main riff, um, sometimes he'll just play the low strings, kind of like the low bass strings. Maybe the E through the G string. Um, sometimes he'll just strum it the whole thing so you can hear the, the high E string and everything too. So it's really kind of varied as he goes through. So all together we have this. All right, so it's pretty basic riff, uh, but pretty classic too for all the Queen fans out there. Um, now that is a main riff, which also makes up the verse. So as Freddie Mercury's vocals come in, we continue to hear, um, hear that riff. And then we get to the chorus, uh, which uses a lot of the similar chords as well. It looks like this, a lot of different feel though. <laughs> All right, so that had a little fill there at the end that I'll get into. But before we do that, let's just get through the rest of it. We're going to start with this A major triad. So we still have this open A string. Once again, it's going to ring underneath all these triads that we do. And all these triads 
<laughs> occur on strings two, three, uh, three, and four together. So they're basic closed position triads. Don't worry what that means if you don't know. Fifth fret on the B, sixth fret on the G, and um, um, the seventh fret on the D string. So these, uh, you're gonna play that and then go to the uh, this chord that was in the chorus already. And then move that down two frets. This chord was in, uh, I'm sorry, this chord was in the verse. And then this down to that D. So from that E to D, so we see these chords before, and then to that A. So you basically go through those four chords that we've all, we've, this is the only new one we have. All right, so that was the low A string was going on underneath all those. When you get down to the A chord, just kind of chug on that a little bit. Kind of vamp on it a little bit. And then we're going to end it with that little fill. So that's going to pull off three to two on the B. Over to the G string there. So you already got bar here, you're playing the second fret. And then hit the chord. So it is. So first half of the chorus. All right, second half of the chorus is the same thing except for that little fill at the end. So that little down, 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 down. So that is just a pull off four to two on the D, and then three pull off to zero. So you can kind of bend that three in just a touch, give it some attitude. And then you pull it off to the open strings with this. And then you have the same fill that ends it. All right, so the whole chorus basically is that chord progression played twice with a slightly different ending the second time. So all together. All right, so then we're back to the main riff, uh, the same, same thing we did at the beginning, and then back into the chorus as well. So nothing changes when we go back through them um, the second time. After the second chorus, we have uh, that main riff that is played the same way, except they, he does these little muted strums to, in between them. So it looks like this. So it's just the same riff, just, but when you mute the strings there, then you, on the muted strings, just go down, up, down. Okay, it's just basically that's what's going on. Um, so you'll hear that little difference and that's about it. Uh, it's kind of an abbreviated uh, section here because it takes us into the bridge section. I'm gonna turn, the bridge is mostly on a more of a clean guitar tone. Um, but I'll just kind of roll my volume off a little bit here, clean it up a touch, and I'll play the bridge for you real quick, and then we'll look at it uh, note by note. So that little ending there, uh, just fair warning, if it didn't sound, you might think they're going to a different section. This is a single version here, and there is a guitar layer over that, which I'll cover, and we'll try to combine them as well. Um, but what I just did there at the end was just what Brian May usually plays live at that part. So um, let's uh, start here with this E major chord. So just strum across an E major chord. And then the open high E and the B. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the second fret on the G and the fourth fret on the D. 
Now that's going to be the core shape, and this is a little bit different. Sometimes you'll see, uh, you know, probably people play this and they have the note on the low E string there. It actually doesn't do that. He hits this F sharp on the on the D string twice instead, uh, and lets the bass uh, take care of the low end. So we have the second fret on the G string, and then the fourth fret on the D twice, and then we have the open high E, and then the second fret on the G for this. All right. Now move that up two frets, fourth fret on the G, sixth fret on the D, once again twice, and then the open high E and the B. So we have that so far. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the sixth fret on the G, seventh fret on the D, and then the fifth fret on the high E. So we have that. So all together. All right, then we have a series of chords. Now this first group, this D major chord to this A, I've seen him play it like this, and I've seen him jump down and just play it as the open position. So you can do this, this first two chords, you can play them um, either way you want. Um, so we have the D major chord first, so it's uh, fifth fret on the A string, and then seventh fret all across the D, G, and the B. To that A chord, that was the first chord in the chorus. So we have this. All right, and then we just go G to D twice. Let's wear this. All right, from there, we start over kind of with the same chords that we did before. It's just slight variations. So we have the E major chord starting. So that's the same there. And then we have... Uh, so this chord that we did before, we had the high E string open. This time what you're gonna do is you're gonna bar across the third fret so you can get that second fret on the high E string. So other than that, it's the same picking pattern. It's just gonna change that high E string to the second fret. So we have that G string once, D string twice, and then high E, and then G. All right, now you can let go of that bar. You're gonna go up here now and play that four or six again. And uh, that's the same this time, followed just by the high E and the, uh, the open high E and open B string. All right, and then we're going to end it with this. So that's just that six, seven that we did before, the open A, and then that, over, uh, that A major chord. Now we have this little ending here, which looks like this. All right, so that's that D major chord moved up to an E. And he starts doing some uh, kind of palm muting on it. And here is what he plays live at this part. So let me show you that and then talk about what's going on on top of that. So this is the fourth fret on the low E and the fifth fret on the A. A tritone there. He resolves that to an A major. Um, so we have A there, this is fifth fret on the low E string, and then the fourth fret there on the A string. And then to move up to the seventh fret on the low E and fifth fret on the A. That's the last chord before the solo. So it's So we still have those ringing notes over it. You can kind of incorporate those. That's the overdub. He doesn't do that live, but you can just go. So if it's if it's worth it to you to hear those, that's you can just grab that open high E and then the B. So 
it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but that's something that you can do if you really like the sound of the, that overdub there. All right, so that leads into the guitar solo. So let me play through that real quick, and then I'll take you through it phrase by phrase. <laughs> So, big overdub there at the end, too. So, we're going to start with this. So, that's the sixth fret there on the G string, like that. And then hammer on six to seven over to nine on the G. All right, then you're going to jump up to the tenth fret there on the B. So that's the 10th fret on the B string. Slide up to 12, and as you slide up to 12, you're gonna do a, a whole step bend there. Release that bend, back down to, pull off to the 10th fret, and then back into a, kind of a couple of bends there at the 12th fret, so we have this. So as he does that last bit, he slides up into this bend at the 17th fret. And you, you see Brian may do that a lot. He really kind of likes to slide into a bend. Um, it, it, makes, it gives it a really exciting sound, uh, but it's not the easiest technique to, to really get in tune. So it is. It kind of has like a seamless quality about it. All right, so after you get to that bend at the 17th fret, we have this. So that's that bend at the 17th fret release. And you're just going to pick 17, 15, 14, 15, 17 on the beat. Then over to 14 there on the G. Then you pick the 16th fret and do a couple of bend and releases there. Pull off to 14, over to 16 on the D, and back to 14 on the G. All right, next phrase. All right, so that's a half step bend at the 16th fret on the high E string. Then pick it and release it. Pull off to 14 and back to 16. Then you can pull off four, uh, that 16 to 14 into a bend there at the 17th fret there on the B. So with this. Then we have a quick little low dial lift. That's going to be. Uh, Pulling off 17 to 15 to 14 on the B, back up, hammer back on 15, and hammer on 70. And then back over to the 14th fret there on the G, into a bend. Kind of some bending releases at the 16th there on the G. So we have this. So we have this all together for that phrase. And the end of the solo looks like this. All right, so that's just now playing 16, 15, 14 on the beat. Over to 16 there on the uh, G string. Then you can do a quick little hammer from 14 to 16, pull off to 14. Slide down to 13. One more time. Then over to um, 16, I'm sorry, yeah, 16, 14 on the D. Then move down to the 12th fret. Pull off 12 to 11 on the D. 
over to A, uh, the 12th fret on the A string. And then we do that fill that we did earlier. And then you kind of kind of do it twice in a row. So we this get the chord and then do that fill twice. And then the actual the harmony just if you want can just jump to a D chord. And there it goes. Or if you want to play one of the actual notes that he bends, there's a harmony there, but the main one is is that 17th fret there then on the B string where that D chord hits. Or All right, so that is it for the solo. Coming out of there, we're going to have a muted version of that main riff. Uh, so you can kind of dial back the gain a little bit and just So I'm just going to do this both of the A chords here just as that standard A chord that we did earlier. So we start the same way. Just as some mute kind of muted downstrokes there are a couple on the A string. Open A, so we have this and then to that D. And then you just keep doing those mutes. So we have this again. One more time. Then move up two frets. And then instead of coming up to this one, you can just go back to the A. Like this. So um, then that goes straight into the chorus, which is the same thing that we've uh, already covered. Um, and then we have at the, we have a variation after that chorus of the main riff, um, which looks like this. So that's coming right before the ending. So it's the same thing. So just letting everything ring. But the first time you hear it, he doesn't move to that D chord. He just goes like this. All right, so that's the very first time. So that first time you're playing that riff, you're, you're used to doing A to D three times. Well, you're just only going to do it twice this time because the first time you don't leave the A. And then from there you do. And then normal. So you do that, and then the, the second time through the riff, you would do it just like we did it earlier in the song. Obviously letting everything ring. And then he moves everything up an octave. So just take this, move it up 12 frets, and then it's the exact same thing. So you just do it one time up there and then you're back down here. Alright, and then uh, we get to the very end of the song, which looks like this. Alright, so that's kind of just that same riff. And then you just let the uh, mute that chord this time. So you just do that three times. It's the very end of the track. <laughs> and then we're going to end it with that little fill we did at the end of the chorus. All right, that is it for Hammered Fall. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a fun track to play and uh, uh, not overly difficult as well. All right, I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons 365com